What do fairy tales mean for you? Fairy tales have a great meaning to me and to my family. I believe in fairy tales. Uh, I believe it's the best way to uh, introduce through a poetical way meanings, symbols and uh, great new passages uh, for imagination. Uh, not even for kids, for, but for everyone. Uh, fairy tales are remember story for children, which mother told the children before and these days. I remember beautiful stories like Cinderella, Magic Pot, uh, Shepherd, uh, many stories. Actually, all the fairy tales, they have a message, which is we had it and we will give to our new generation a same because it make us it always inside natural things and which is uh, you will behave about or anything or any kind of uh, negative or positive things you will find out with this fairy tale it's actually all the fairy tales have a meanings specific meanings which is our grandparents teach us and this we find out a lot of things and we have to give these things to our new generation also. Do you say fairy tales to your children? Uh, not yet, because my girl is 18 months, but later, yes, sure, why not? I like to, because uh, she can learn many things from the fairy tale. Yes, I say to them, and they are listening very nicely, and they said, Baba, explain me this, explain me that, how it was, oh, while they feel deep and the impression I can see the face from my children's like how they are going and how deep they are listening they are laughing they are sad also and it's good I do tell fairy tales to my daughter every night the whole of our lives she's always so excited for a new story uh, for a new window to open her imagination sometimes I used to I used to say uh, big stories and I use this cut for the next night so she's more excited about this uh, and sometimes I I give her some questions I mean what do you believe it's gonna happen Were you told fairy tales do you believe that they left you something um, yes actually uh, you know, when I was a child, I think I was four or five years old, I was in the kindergarten and my teacher told me the story, but I forget it. Uh, but I remember just the name of Magic Pot because, and some hands with ju that jumping uh, out of the Magic Pot. And I'm going to tell this story to my daughter maybe next year because now she do, she can't understand this story and the message that this story has for children uh, well i was uh, very fond of books when i was a kid uh, my parents didn't have so much time to tell me stories but i was very fond of the radio and the radio shows about fairy fairy tales so i was listening to all these tales every day of my life they had a very great impact to me. That's why I became a mother, <laughs> that kind of mother. I mean, I love telling fairy tales. I will always do this. Yes, my grandmother, God bless them, and she was always telling fairy tales, always telling truth, untruth, that uh, life, uh, about so many things, uh, I used to listen from my grandmother. And uh, now I find out when I become a father, and it's truth, <laughs> it's act actually truth.
shepherd boy tender his master's sheep near a dark forest, not far from the village. Soon, he found life in the pasture very dull. All he could do to amuse himself was to talk to his dog or to play on his shepherd's pipe. One day, as he sat watching the sheep and the quiet forest and thinking what he could do should he see a wolf, he thought of a plan to amuse himself. His master has taught him to call for help should a wolf attack the flock and the villagers would drive it away. So now, though he had not seen anything that even looked like a wolf, he ran toward the village shouting at the top of his voice, Wolf! 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 As he expected, the villagers who heard the cry dropped their work and ran in great excitement to the pasture. But when they got there, they found the boy doubled up with laughter and the trick and he had played on them. A few days later, the shepherd boy again shouted, Wolf! 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 Again the villagers ran to help him only to be laughed at again. Then, one evening, as the sun was setting behind the forest and the shadows were creeping out over the pasture, a wolf really did spring from the undergrass and fall upon the sheep. In terror, the boy ran toward the village shouting, Wolf! 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 But though the villagers heard the cry, they did not run to help him as they had before. He cannot fool us again. Not again, they said. The wolf killed a great many of the boy's sheep and then slipped away into the forest. You see a story of a farmer and his magic pot. In a village lived a farmer named Ramon. He was very kind and a wise man. He owned a few acres of land. Though he was a good farmer, his land never produced any grains. He used to plow and plow and plow, but his farm was always born. His friends every day told him that your land has not given you a single crop since years now. You should sell them and buy a good one. Rama replied, these lands are for my father and I keep trying on them. Rama didn't have money, so I spent days without food and ate some fruits from a tree around. Every day he went to land and plot because he wants to know where does his seeds go. One day, it was late afternoon, when he finally thought of resting. He was too hungry. He was about to stop plowing. Suddenly, his spade hit something deep into the ground sounds like a metal. Wow! He found a huge pot. It was strange. Who would bury a metal pot so deep in a field? Rama was angry because he wasted energy over nothing. He threw his spade into the metal pot and went to sleep in the shade of the tree. He decided to sell the land and feeling sorry about this decision. But he has no choice. He wanted to go back home. He walked to the park to take his spade. He was shocked because he found 100 spades in the park. He couldn't tell which spade belonged to him. Then he understood it was a magic pot. He wanted to try something else. So he kept a single grave in the pot. He couldn't believe his eyes. A single grave now is 100 graves, so took the pot home. First, he decided to put an egg in, because he was too hungry. Immediately, he went to the market and bought a single egg, then placed in a pot. In no time, the pot was full of eggs. He ate two eggs and sold 98 eggs and received lots of money. Rama used the pot for different things. When he needed clothes to place a small piece of clothes and the pot would give clothes. 
if he needed shares, he put a share in the pot and received 100 shares. He put fruits, clothes, grain, spices, and many things inside pot. The pot gave him many things. All his friends wondered about his success, but no one could understand the truth. One day he thought of testing his pot. He placed a head inside. Suddenly, 100 hens jumping out of the pot. His house was full of hens. One of them flew and sat inside the pot again. Again, 100 hens jumped out of the pot. And again and again and again, 100 hens jumping out. Rama ran out of the house and all the hens followed him. All people surprised to see many hands around him. Rama started talking with himself, I must use the pot wisely. Unfortunately, one of the king's soldiers was listening to him. Soldier went to the king and explained to the king all the story. King said, bring Rama and the pot here immediately. That pot belongs to me. Rama knew why the king asked him to get a pot. So he went to the king and gave him the pot to check it. King said, how can this pot produce so many hands? Let me check it. So king went inside the pot. Rama said, don't do that, don't do that. But it was too late because the king went to the pot. Now there was 100 kings climbing out of the pot. Before anybody could do anything and before anybody could say anything, they start fighting and said, I'm king, this is my chair, this is my bed, this is my pot. So within minutes, they killed each other. Rama realized how dangerous the pot is. He threw the pot away and was sad because he lost his pot. But now he had a land which grew crops and started farming and was happy with his life. Once upon a time, a jackal once fell into a large vessel full of dye. When he returned home, all his astonished friends says, what has befallen you? He answered with a curl of his tail. Was there ever anything in the world so fine as I am? Look at me. Let no one ever presume to call me Jekyll again. What then are you to be called? Ask they. Peacock. You will henceforth call me Peacock, replied the Jekyll wiggling up and down in all the glory of sky blue but said his friends a peacock can spread his tail magnificently can you spread your tail well no i cannot quite that replied the jackal and a peacock continued they can make a fine sweet cry can you make a fine, sweet cry? It must be admitted, said the pretender, that I cannot do that either. Then retorted they, it is quite evident that you are not a jackal, neither are you a peacock, and they drove him out of their company. Do you believe that there are teachings in fairy tales? Uh, actually, it is because uh, when they listen fairy tale, when I listen fairy tale, and while I was grow and I find out the difference 
like uh, what god makes you you have to be happy and say thanks for god however he made me because it will very easy to survive your life to continue to the end but if you are not happy so you are always negative but the fairy tale is giving you positive things and positive thought yes sure actually all fairy tales teach something to children for example the story of magic pot uh, it learn children don't want more than you need yes i believe fairy tales is the greatest school ever even einstein said that once i do believe this there are a lot of meanings through these stories uh, about kindness about uh, human nature about uh, uh, be another person in another life or uh, can bring people uh, very close to nature to life itself yes i believe fairy tales have great meanings for everyone not not only for kids